Jets and the Miami Dolphins. Hi everyone with Randy Cross Kevin Harlan great to have you with us this afternoon neither team is going to the playoffs so what catches your eye today well unlike a lot of games today where people aren't playing and aren't starting you'll see everybody today I'm going to watch Ricky Williams I love to watch Ricky Williams run he is one of the best in the league and he'll be running that way today and Chad Pennington five interceptions last week what's his motivation he wants to finish his year off right going in the other going in the proper direction for next year and the Chevrolet keys for the game very very simple and to the point first for Miami get your 10th win you're not going to the playoffs but get number 10 and for the Jets well very simple ruin Miami's day and don't let them get that 10th win and the speculation continues on the fate of Miami coach Dave one step we're back to Miami after this by Bridgestone Tires, advanced technology that gives you a grip on the future. The Expedia.com Ticket to Paradise Pro Bowl sweepstakes is Keith Degnan from Mechanicsville, Virginia. Welcome to the following presentation of the National Football League on CBS Sports, home of Super Bowl 38. It's the season finale for the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins who won the first meeting earlier this season. Our kickoff is next on the final regular season weekend in the NFL. Subway present three quarters full pro player stadium here in Miami with Randy Cross Kevin Harlan the Jets at six and nine Miami at nine and six it is cloudy on a 75 degree afternoon and winds gusting over 20 miles an hour that's the Jets leading this series history by a couple games the Dolphins won earlier this season in the Meadowlands 21 to 10 and Herman Edwards who is 25 and 22 overall in his third season as the head coach of the Jets and a lot of speculation on fourth year head coach Dave Wanstead who came as Jimmy Johnson's number one assistant the assistant head coach at that time then when Johnson retired Wanstead takes over he is two and five against the Jets as the Miami Dolphins coach the Jets lost to New England last week 21 to 16 Miami beat Buffalo in upstate New York 20 to 3 as Doug Bryan sets to kick off for the Jets and deep back Charlie Rogers along with Travis Minor. It's the Jets it's the Dolphins and the season finale and the regular year on CBS and we are underway and Minor from the six yard line. The backup running back runs into Seoul. And then he is brought down by Quincy Stewart, a reserve linebacker on a return of 18 yards. Long Island native quarterback Jay Fiedler struggling, having thrown one touchdown pass and five interceptions over the last three games. The two Dolphin tackles have started every game. The rookie Smith and perhaps the best of the group, Todd Wayne. And running back Ricky Williams over 1,000 yards for the fourth consecutive season. Second straight as a Dolphin back from the 25. First and ten for Fiedler. Rob Conrad out of Syracuse is the lead back. And a tackle made by Brian Thomas after a gain of a body yard. Make it two. Thomas on that defensive end. The Jet defense, Sean Ellis, voted to his first Pro Bowl. He's recorded 11 sacks, which ranks him fourth in the AFC. 13-year veteran Mo Lewis playing in his 200th and perhaps last game for the New York Jets. And the longest tenured Jet defensive back, Ray Micken, starts at one corner this afternoon. Second long eight near the 28. 
And Fiedler got a block from Williams and throws outside to Darius Thompson, shoved out of bounds by Ray Mickens, 35 yard lines, close to a first down, gain of eight yards. You know, when you watch the tapes of these two football teams, one thing that just jumped out at us was, was the lack of speed defensively for the Jets. So you see the pad that Mickens is giving the wide receiver Thompson on that play. That's something they have to do against these Dolphin receivers. They have to give them room. They have to play too deep. They have to get safety help inside. Otherwise, especially with a guy like Chris Chambers, he could light them up. Sean Ellis on the defensive line atop your screen. Williams in the backfield. It is a first down. Ricky Williams, the call, hit by Cowart and brought down by Mo Lewis at about the 39 and a gain of four. Yeah. Yeah. And there's Mo Lewis and uh, 13 years in the NFL, Randy, all these games with the Jets, and there is speculation this could be his final NFL regular season game. Must be the last game of the regular season, yes. and they're not going to the playoffs. Right. Everybody's trying to change rosters, and Mo's had a great career, you know, out of Georgia, but this defense, the bottom line, along the lines of what I was just mentioning, they have to get younger. And they have to get a lot faster. 4-3-4 four, four, jet defense, 39, second down, six. Fielder dumps it across the middle, caught by McMichael, the tight end, drilled by Sam Coward, who leads the jet defense and tackles. It's a gain of four to five yards up to the 43 and about a yard and a half shy of the first. Yeah, you know, we've seen Ricky Williams run the ball, and it's pretty well documented that Ricky's shoulder has not felt the best I mean Brian Dawkins who was on the NFL today today put that nice hot hit on him in that Philadelphia game that Monday nighter a couple weeks ago and it's been sore since then had surgery on the shoulder in the offseason had to shoot it up last week to play people would assume hey you don't play in the last game there's nothing at stake five in the second there I'm sorry Randy two linebackers and it's third down and two from the 43 Fiedler feeling pressure from Thomas has the first down as he is tackled eventually by Mickens, diving up to the 48-yard line in a gain of five. I'm sorry to stop you. Well, that's something that Jay Fiedler has in this offense that when Brian Greasy was playing, he couldn't do. And that's the ability to make something at all when there's nothing there. Nice pressure on the outside, nice press inside by the tackles, but you don't keep the lanes working, and a guy that can move his feet like a Fiedler can get those extra yards. 48, it is a first down. Williams remains in the backfield and back to a 4-3-4 base defense by the Jets and Ricky Williams. And brought down. They had Coward in there along with Marvin Jones, gain of a yard. Yes, one thing that's been talked about quite a bit of late is Ricky Williams and the load that he's had and that Dave, William, Dave uh, wants that basically says, look, you determine how much you play, how much you carry the ball. You want to stay in there, we're going to keep giving it to you. And, you know, he's, he's creeping up on 400 carries in a season, and these four guys all have one thing in common, and that's after they had those 400 carries, they were never quite as spry and bouncy. I mean, it really takes a toll, and it will beat up a running back. Second down nine, seventh play of the game, opening drive, 49-yard line, Fielder getting away from Ellis by moving up in the pocket and dumps it off to Ricky Williams. Who is it by Marvin Jones, corkscrewing his way to the 44. Gain of seven and about two yards shy of a first down. Ellis was applying, applying some great pressure on the play. There are reports that Ricky Williams has some rushing incentives involved with his performance this afternoon. Yeah, according to Dave Wanstad, you could have surprised him. He didn't know much about it. You know, Ricky asked him last week on the sideline, do I have 100 yards yet? <laughs> no, well, he went back in there and All got right, it. And it. That's really superfluous. I mean, it, to the organization, it means money, but otherwise, it's meaningless. It's third down and two. It's Fiedler throws, and it is caught. Darius Thompson, the free agent acquisition over the offseason. Beasley with the coverage, a gain of eight on third and two. And the Dolphins have another first down to the 36. Another case of the pad we talked about earlier, this time against Beasley instead of Mickens. Thompson does a nice job of driving him off then coming back to the spot. And Fielder delivers the ball, and it's a nice catch. And we've already seen more of Darius Thompson in the first drive than most Dolphins fans have seen for the most better part of this season. It was that kind of a disappointing season. Oh, what, what a marquee receiver when he came no, over to start. With. Exactly. Dolphins have converted two third and twos on this drive. 36 of the Jets, first and 10. And Fiedler throws caught by McMichael, the tight end, grabbed by Marvin Jones near the 27 yard line, a gain of about nine yards, and a yard shy of the first down deep in Jet territory. See, that what makes it very hard for this Jet defense to get off the field is if they have to soften up because of their lack of speed. 
and you have to play too deep in the safety position. Jay Fiedler is going to start taking those little outs, and he's going to start hitting McMichael consistently over the center of the field because Ted Cottrell's defense, personnel-wise, just can't hold up to these, style, these styles of offenses like Miami has right now, the way they're throwing the ball. Two tight ends, second down one from the Jets' 27-yard line. The fake to Williams, who gets a block on Brian Thomas, and Fiedler going deep, caught! Chambers inside the five. He was drilled by Tyrone Carter and Marvin Jones. It's a gain of 23, first and goal, Miami Dolphins. And just a trend that's been in place the entire season for the Jets' defense. People have taken advantage of them because they can't get off the field, and they've taken advantage of them, not only with the receivers on the outside, but tight ends and receivers in the slot positions right here with McMichael in front of the safety behind the linebackers. When you're playing deep enough to guarantee the wide receiver can't get you deep, the tight end can get you short. First and goal from the three. McMichael, the tight end, in motion. Ricky Williams, a block from Perry. Great defensive play by Marvin Jones, who came shooting through at a loss of a yard. I think the, the speculation also, who will return for the Jets, is also pointing at the veteran Marvin Jones. Well, it's, it's who's returning a lot of people in that defense that gets that bad that fast. Marvin Jones lying up at middle linebacker on the left side of your screen. Does a nice job of just filling despite the attempted block by McMichael. But you're going to hear that about a lot of Jet players on defense. Will they come back? A lot of them aren't going to come back because they're not young enough and they're not fast enough. Second and goal at the four. Williams in the backfield. And Fiedler throws looking for McMichael and complete guns. And Mo Lewis recovering on the play. First incompletion by Fiedler this afternoon. Yeah, to me, that's kind of a weird situation in New York because Herman Edwards came in here as the Tampa cover two kind of right, guy. Right. Brought a, a Ted Cottrell in here who had some of the best defenses we've seen the last, you know, five, six, seven, eight years in Buffalo, number one defenses. Personnel's a mix and match. I, I don't think personnel-wise really fits what they're trying to do. They got four receivers, including McMichael. Third down and goal just inside the five, officially the four. And Fiedler slings a pass incomplete. McMichael couldn't get it. Coverage by Mickens, among others, in the secondary for the Jets. Fourth and goal, and after moving all that way with relative ease, Dave Wanstead's got to settle for three. Well, watch right here. Chester McLaughlin's going to drop off and join the group at the goal line. Look at all the defenders the New York Jets are going to put at the goal line. They jam up the receivers. You want to go to the goal line? You have to fit it in between about five guys. Here's Olindo Mate, who has had only 76% of his field goals go in. That's the lowest in a long time for him. But he nails it. But the Jet defense holds Miami out of the end zone. And obviously, Dave Weinstead disappointed because of that. Not getting in. But they get three, and they lead the Jets. Here's Hall of Fame coach Don Shula on the left, and his quarterback in all those terrific years, Bob Greasy. Bob's son plays on this team. Brian on the Jets, sorry, on the uh, Miami Dolphins team. 23-yard field goal by Olindo Mari. And the ball blows off the tee. That was a 13-play drive. But what is interesting about the Jets' defense, and Randy, you kind of alluded to it in that last drive, it's the 11th time in 16 games that the Jets have allowed a score on the opening drive, and that is an NFL high. But it's also a team that defensively hasn't scored a touchdown defensively in 37 games. That's the longest streak in the NFL also. Lamont Jordan is deep back. They had a kid named Jonathan Carter back there who led the AFC, but he's injured from the six-yard line. Here's reserve running back Lamont Jordan who cuts outside, heals his way, and then is upended by Arturo Freeman with a flag thrown at the 32. Looks like it's against the Jets, and it is. Holding number 52 of the return team, 10 yards, first down. Should be noted the Jets are the least penalized team in the National Football League, and we'll get our look at Chad Pennington when we come back with his Jets down 3-0 to Miami in the first quarter. On CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Friendly nonstop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. IBM, official information technology partner of the NFL. And 
by GMC. We are professional grade. We've had a windy weekend here in Miami with Randy Cross, Kevin Harlan after the field goal by Mare. And the return and the penalty on the Jets. 20 yard line, first and 10. Jed Bennington hit as he throws. Caught Beck. The tight end grabbed by Knight. 31 yard line, gain of 12. Chad Pennington has thrown eight interceptions in the last four games, and the Jets are four and four since his return. First career start today for left guard Brandon Moore taking the place of the injured Dave Zott. Wide receiver Santana Moss is having a career year, capturing his first 1,000-yard receiving season. It is a first down, 32-yard line. Soul in motion. Curtis Martin, the call. Grabbed by Jason Taylor. Devoured at about the 34 after a gain of two. Boasting the best defensive end tandem in the NFL, Wale Agunle, a third in the NFL in sacks. Remember, Jason Taylor led the NFL in sacks last year. Tim Bowen's out today with an injury. Middle linebacker Zach Thomas tops the Dolphin defense and tackles again, seventh time in eight years. And Patrick Sertan is off to his second consecutive Pro Bowl in Honolulu, part of his secondary, which is allowed amongst the fewest touchdown passes in the NFL. Second down eight, 34 yard line. Sayon Thomas look like they're gonna blitz. Here they come, there goes a play, and it's off the back. His second catch, upended by a certain 40 yard line. Another flag is thrown, gain of six on the play. Pennington did a nice job of using that bark to affect the defense of the Miami Dolphins. I'm not sure if Agunlier didn't line up offsides Offside anyway, left line defensive line end. Defense, number 55, five Good call. Yards. Repeat second down. Bengals already a 7 0 lead. Rudy Johnson a touchdown run. Second down and three for the Jets. The Jets have lost two of their last three games. Miami has lost two of their last three. Second down and three from the 39. Saw the slot wide receiver back to the tight end in motion. They got to get to the 42. And Pennington hit and put up by Agunlier and taken down. First sack today in Agunlier's 15th sack of the season. Two behind, also down. Two behind Michael Strahan of the Giants came in with 17. And this sack by Agunlier is just his style. Watch him coming from the right side of the screen. Starts up, arm under, little rip. Right into the Pennington wheelhouse under Kareem McKenzie. That's just using an offensive lineman's momentum against him, then using your upper body strength to rip and pull his body away from you. Six in the secondary, four linemen, one linebacker, 30 yard line, third and 12. Pennington with some time and throws. It's caught by Kevin Lockett. And he's up to the 48. He's got a first down, picking up 17, Randy, on third down and 12. Yeah, on a team that's a little bit lopsided. When you say lopsided, they have so many of the so-called stars on the defensive side of the field. You've got two really good defensive ends. You've got two really good press-type corners. This happens alarmingly a lot to the Miami Dolphins. Good first down, good second down. And then in a lot of situations, bang, they get hit for these big plays where you really wouldn't expect it because of the pressure and pressure the coverage they have. Terrell Buckley made that last tackle. It is a first down. B.J. Askew is in. Pennington falls. That slows it up. And Agunier is in the backfield getting a hold of Curtis Martin. It's a loss of three. Good quick play by Agunier, but Pennington didn't help his cause by tripping down. And follow along with the playoff race and see which teams will face off on wild card weekend. Just click on the playoff race at CBSSportsLine.com. Kevin, one thing to keep an eye on today, you're going to see every gimmick in the book out of both these teams. Fake field goals, fake punts, reverses, reverse passes, double reverses, reverses on kickoffs. 4-3-4 four, four, Miami defense, second down 13. And Pennington with some play action. Beck is hit by Greenwood at midfield, and he must have... Uh, he did. He crawled into Miami territory at the 49, about five yards shy of a first, a gain of eight on the play. And again, Greenwood with the tackle. And what a strange year for, for both these football teams, but especially for the New York Jets, who 
find themselves sitting here coming into this game at six and nine and guaranteed Herman Edwards' his first losing season as a Jets coach. You know, off season you lose all those players to Washington who didn't do much for Washington, but it hurt your team. And then you have Pennington hurt in the preseason. It almost seems as a football team didn't have its chance from the get-go. Six in the secondary, third down and five from the 48-yard line of Miami. Here comes the rush. Jason Taylor brings down Pennington. They got around Fabini. It's the second Miami sack. And the Jets have got a punch. It isn't always getting around a tackle. Watch the Fabini Taylor matchup and watch Taylor come up and then under. Up, under. Just like you saw Kareem McKenzie get beaten by Agunlier, that's exactly how Fabini is beaten by Taylor. Momentum going up the field, and then because of the speed, you can keep that weight going one direction. The fast guy comes underneath. Straczynski will punt, averaging 37 yards per boot. Gets this high. Charlie Rogers signaling for and giving a fair catch at the 14-yard line, a 41-yard punt. Jason Taylor, his 12th sack of the season. Jason Taylor, six straight games with the sack at his 13th moments ago. And after the jet punt, Dolphins take over on the 14. Uh, Mane, 23-yard field goal. The difference in the game. This is Miami's second possession today. Fiedler to Ricky Williams. Marvin Jones right there with Sean Ellis. No game. Second down. Tonight on CBS, Oscar winners Meryl Streep and William Hurt and Oscar nominee Renee Zellweger. Star in the network premiere of One True Thing. That's tonight on CBS. Second down and 10. Miami, somehow that last drive managed to go 14 plays. That's something. <laughs> and get a field goal. That, that sort of encapsulates their offensive performance for the year in one little drive. 4 3 4 jet defense. Second down 10. Williams in the backfield. Here comes Ellis. They dump it off to Williams. Chase by Ferguson. Dances away from Lewis. Gets a block from Nails. Ricky Williams on the fly. Chase by Mickens in a foot race. Ricky Williams inside the 30 yard line. Well, it's not often, Kevin, you see a wall develop on an offensive play like this. Quick screen, here comes the wall. And all here also doesn't come to team speed for the Jets' defense. That's a glaring indictment of that lack of speed when, of course, you have a corner coming from the backside catching Ricky and Mickens. That's bad pursuit angles, and that's when you take a bad angle, you can't make up for it because you don't have the speed to do it. 27-yard line, end around to Thompson, double reverse. They give it off to Chambers, and a good block by Wade Smith, and here comes Chambers, who's pushed out of bounds by Tyrone Carter, and all that running produces about two yards down to the Jet 25-yard line. You called it moments ago, you're going to see a lot of razzle-dazzle today. But much to do about nothing. What happens when you're not used to doing this very much is the execution gets just a little sloppy and a little off. And defensively, you, you have some very good reaction. I mean, that was a veteran job and a nice job by Mo Lewis getting up the field and fighting off both those blockers to really disrupt that entire play. Jets have this great field possession on a screen pass to Ricky Williams, which covered 59 yards, and this will take us to the end of the first quarter. Wow. Olindo Mare with a 23-yard field goal has been the only score. The Jets, the Dolphins in the regular season finale. We'll return to Miami after this. NFL on CBS is sponsored by General Motors. And by Miller. There's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. The MetLife blimp is cruising the skies of the Miami area to provide aerial coverage of today's Jets-Dolphins game. The blimp typically cruises at speeds of 35 miles an hour at uh, about 1,200 feet. We begin the second quarter with Randy Cross, Kevin Harlan. Second down eight, Amari field goal. The difference from the Jet 25. Conrad in the backfield. And Steve throws incomplete. 
Jets were covering with Micken and with Aaron Beasley on Chambers deep in the end zone. Monday on CBS begins with still standing at a special time, followed by Yes, Dear, then it's Everybody Loves Raymond. Then the season's number one new comedy, Two and a Half Men. Plus CSR Miami and The Late Show with David Letterman. That's Monday on CBS, America's most watched network, and through one quarter, here are the numbers. Well, plus the total plays. I mean, Miami's now run, you know, 17, 18 plays. They managed to eat up the better part of that first quarter in doing it. Five in the secondary, third down eight. Fiedler gets a block from Wade Smith. That pass is uncatchable as they're throwing wide to a Rondé Gaston. Incomplete. Let's go to New York and Jim Nance. All right, thank you, Kevin. As you know, Cincinnati needs to win today and then have the Ravens lose tonight to the Steelers. Here are the Bengals trying to do their part. It's Rudy Johnson from five yards out. It's 7-3 Cincinnati first quarter. Let's go back to you. All right, thank you very much. You know, Cincinnati has won, Jim, five consecutive home games, and that's the standing. They're gaming back to Baltimore, who plays tonight against Pitt Pittsburgh. Here's a 43-yard Olindo Monte field goal try, and he trails his second of the game. Another good-looking drive by the Dolphins, but only three points. Well, all that means is you're one play away from being behind seven to six, and Pennington then it's a pass. <laughs> They got the 43-yard field goal from Mare, but it was the 59-yard catch and run by Ricky Williams, which set up that great field position. But once again, just a field goal after all those great yards. Good point. Here's the kickoff by Mare with the wind at his back. He kicks it out of the end zone and whistling over the head of Lamont Jordan. Oh, Mare. <laughs> I couldn't resist. He leads the NFL in touchbacks. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. And Ricky Williams leads the league in straight arms. Little face music there for Mickens. <laughs> Second consecutive start at the 20 yard line for the New York Jets. A touchback by Orlando Mare moments ago after a 43 yard field goal put the Dolphins up six to nothing. Curtis Martin on first and ten. Runs into his own guy. Moreland Greenwood is the one who plugged it up and throws him for a three yard loss on the play. You can find out everything you need to know about Super Bowl 38, the history of the game, the entertainment, and everything related to Houston. It's all at SuperBowl.com or at Super Bowl on AOL. If you talk about these two teams, I think the one thing that's common denominator nowadays is you really set up your success during a season in the offseason. I think both these teams did themselves a disservice and put themselves behind the eight ball by what they didn't do in the offseason. 4-3-4 Miami defense. 17 yard line, second and 13 outside they go. It's Santana Moss is brought down by Patrick Sertan going to the Pro Bowl and on the play, a gain of about two. Yeah, talk about that in the offseason. In Miami's case, you know, it was pretty obvious last year, you know, they were going to need some help offensive line wise. And they didn't really get around to really addressing that problem. They'll probably address it this offseason, but they didn't address it last offseason, and they didn't address their wide receiver position, getting somebody opposite Chris Chambers. And it's really hampered them offensively, and as it has hamstrung the offense that Dave Wanstead's tried to put on the field. Six in the secondary, a linebacker, and four down linemen, third down 11. And at the 19, the Jets with Pennington. Hit and caught down, sacked again. This is David Bowens, who throws Pennington for a loss of eight. That is the third sack today recorded by the Miami defense. And really, in the offseason for the Jets, you, know, you watch sick Chad Pennington get sacked here. It's, it's just going to be a quick blast right up the outside. A little E.T. game, and the Jets messed up in the offseason letting all those guys go that went to Washington. That cost them a lot of yards, a lot of talent, and a lot of field position they had last year they didn't get this year. Straczynski to punt, and Charlie Rogers is fading back and out of bounds and flies into the Jets' sideline. And it will be somewhere inside the 47 at the 46 is now where he marks it. A 43-yard punt by Straczynski. Two Dolphin field goals by Monty. Six-nothing Miami. Beautiful day in Miami with Randy Cross, Kevin Harlan, a couple of Monte field goals. Here comes Fiedler after the jet punt, 46-yard line of Miami. Ricky Williams has had a catch and run of 59 yards. One of the bigger plays offensively in the game. And some play action by Fiedler. 
Downfield, caught by Chambers. Back pedals his way into the 35, hit by Tyrone Carter and Sam Garland's a 21-yard pickup to the Jet 33 to New York in Jim Nance. All right, thank you, Kevin. We're keeping an eye on the South Division. Titans and Colts tangling for the top honors. Martin Gramatica has kicked the field goal. It's 3-3 after the first quarter at Tennessee. Meanwhile, no score after one. Houston and Indianapolis. Let's go back to you. There's uh, Tennessee at 11 and 4, and uh, Colts at 11 and 4. Colts are in Houston today. Thank you, Jim. First down, 33 yard line. Ricky Williams on the pitch. Blocked by McMichael. Breaks a tackle from Jones, then gang tackled at about the 29 yard line. They had James Reed, among others, in there. Gain of four. Monday on CBS, after three months of wedded bliss, what kind of marriage advice does Ray's newlywed brother share with the family? Don't miss Everybody Loves Raymond, Monday on CBS. What have you noticed about the Jets' secondary and the way the teams attack them passing the ball? Well, I mentioned earlier about that deep two safety thing, and you, and you, you lob it on the sideline to the fast receivers, and you lob it into the middle in front of the safeties to the tight end, and it's worked effectively every time Jay Peeler's gone back to it. Second down and six with a Conrad block. It's Ricky Williams and brought down by Sean Ellis, a gain of three on the play. But this is really, when you think about it, that this Jets offense in goal-to-goal -goal situations this year, 20 times been in goal-to-goal. -goal. They've had 17 touchdowns and three field goals coming into this game, and already today, this Jets defense has got in that situation twice and held them the field goals. That really speaks to how they're going to play and take control. The defensive coordinator has taken a bulk of the, the blame for what the defense has done. You know, I think right now, these coaches, with what they've lost talent-wise overall and just this team situation, defensively especially, they're playing with an unloaded weapon. 4-3-4, four, four, jet defense, third and three, Fiedler. And it's caught by Tommy Lee. The other tight end is grabbed by Victor Hudson, gain of 10, third and three, first down to the Jet 16-yard line. But back to the whole thing about getting in the red zone and, and getting into this type of the field. As the field shortens, your lack of speed becomes less and less of a factor because you have less and less field to make up for. Suddenly now your linebackers and safeties don't have as far to close on people like Lee when they catch that pass. Don't have as far to close on McMichael coming from tight end. They can jam up. Chambers coming from that wide receiver position. Donald Lee is sixth catch of the season. First down, 16 of the Jets. A fake to Williams. And here goes Fiedler to the end zone for Conrad, covered by the safety guards. There goes the flag. The ex giant. Wow. He hit him before that ball got near him. But unless Rob Conrad had a stepladder near him, there wasn't a chance he was going to catch that pass. <laughs> That was not catchable. <laughs> Conrad didn't play last week because of a concussion. There's no foul on the play, even though the contact occurs early. The ball is overthrown of the receiver. Second down. That's the right call. You be the judge, not only the height of this ball, but watch the lateral nature of this ball if he could have gone at it. Could Conrad have caught this for a touchdown? It's awful close to him. Yeah. But the ball is clearly going to be out of bounds. I... I think that's uh, that's pretty close to his hands, and I was wrong. That probably was pass interference, and it was a catchable ball. Hobson remains in for Mo Lewis at the linebacker. Second down, 10, Jet 16. Ricky Williams with the Jamie Nails lead. Oh, Ricky Williams into the end zone. 16-yard touchdown run. Well, just when you compliment the Jets' defense on what they've done this area field, the 2003 Jets' defense shows up and doesn't tackle. Missed tackle right there. Another missed tackle and a hurdle and a, a drag down by Beasley at the end. Ricky Williams, you're not taking him on head on. You're not tackling Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams with his ninth touchdown run of the season. The extra point caps a six-play, 54-yard drive. Ricky Williams, a 16-yard touchdown run. He's had a terrific season again for Miami. It's power, it's speed, 
Ricky's the total package. On CBS is sponsored by Expedia.com. Don't just travel, travel right. Wachovia Securities, together we can achieve uncommon results. And by the all-new AOL 9.0 Optimized. Life needs upgrades. That is the gorgeous Aventura Waterway here in the Miami area. Ricky Williams with a 13, make it a 16-yard uh, touchdown run with a hurdle involved. That's a touchback. That's the second today. And he has tied Olindo Marihez, the most touchbacks in the NFL since they introduced the K-ball in 99. It's Michael Jackson for the first time since his arrest talks to Ed Brandley and only Ed Brandley. See this exclusive interview tonight on 60 Minutes with Randy Cross, Kevin Harlan. Jets have punted twice. Dolphins have gotten a couple field goals, and moments ago, a 16-yard touchdown run by Ricky Williams. From the 20 on the touchback, Curtis Martin on first and 10, brought down by Sammy Knight. Gain of five up to the 26-yard line to our studios in Genesis. All right, thank you, Kevin. Still eyeing all these happenings in the South. Tennessee and Tampa are tied at three. Meanwhile, the Colts, Vanderjack, this for a little piece of history, his 40th consecutive made field goal, tying the record of Gary Anderson. Three nothing Colts, let's go back to you. And Jim, that thank you, that is 36 this year and going back to last year, 40 straight field goals. Not bad for a guy last January, Peyton Manning referred to as that liquored up kicker running his mouth. Absolutely. Second down and five. Hey, and that went to Curtis Martin on a gain of four and he's up to the 28-yard line. The owner of the Miami Dolphins is Wayne Heisinger. And the decision, he said, will come as early as tomorrow regarding the status of their head coach, Dave Wanstead, here in Miami. What do you think? I think there's a lot of things to address here. One of all, first of all, to me, is sort of the personality of this team. I think it needs to be a heck of a lot tougher and a heck of a lot more resilient. And you don't draft that. Third and one. And they go outside to Sewell, who is chased down by Knight. And he's got the first down up to the 33, a gain of four on third and one. Busy day in the NFL. Back to New York in Chittenden. All right, guys, we just showed you the Vanderjack field goal to give the Colts the 3-0 lead. Meanwhile, O'Donnell at quarterback McNair sitting with the injury. And O'Donnell to the end zone to Drew Bennett. And it's picked off by Dwight Smith in the end zone. It remains 3-3, early second. Let's go back to Kevin and Randy. All right, thank you, Jim. Tampa Bay out of the playoff race at 11-4, Tennessee. First and 10, 33-yard line. So maneuvering out of the backfield. Here comes Chad Pennington winding up and that's Conway. What a catch by Curtis Conway. The ex Chicago Bear and San Diego Charger to the 22. It's a gain of 45 on the play. He was working on Madison. We talked about the very beginning of this game wanting to watch Chad Pennington and how do you come back from that five interception performance. Well, there's a good way to come back from a five interception performance. Just throw that ball absolutely on the fingertips of your wide receiver. Yeah, I can't help but think, though, you know, they lost Lavernius Coles to the Washington Redskins in the offseason. What this offense would be like with Santana Moss, the team MVP this year, and the way he's emerged as a football player, if this team still had a Lavernius Coles at wide receiver and teams having to face that duo of receivers every week. Injured player Larry Chester is uh, lumbering off the field. Oh, yeah, it'd be nice. Oh, this is Lineman lumber. <laughs> what if he was a kicker? What'd he be doing? <laughs> Sashaying? Or? Gingerly leaves the field. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Pennington has had a six of six start through the air. He's hit five different jet receivers today. And he's got the 22 of Miami with the first and 10. And potential is a deadly word in this league, but I, and for my money, I think he's one of the top five quarterbacks in this league. I don't care if he's only started 20 something games. Dario Romero will take Chester's place. First and 10, Curtis Martin, who has run hey, for no, over 1,000 no. yards, nine straight years. Oh, Submarines into the tackle of Moreland Greenwood. A gain of five to the 17. You know, Chad's had a year that, you know, he'd rather, rather very, very much rather forget. Started off with that broken slash dislocated wrist we saw that yesterday in the meeting as ugly as that looks with all the scar tissue but 
as a career, this guy has pointed everything in the right direction from completion percentage to touchdown interception percentage. Six defensive backs, one linebacker Thomas, four down linemen, second down five, 17 yard line. With Martin in the backfield and four receivers deployed, it's a pass caught by Santana Moss. Right in front of Terrell Buckley, tackled on the play by Thomas. They'll mark him at the eight yard line, it's a gain of nine. Well, the injury to Pennington was huge. Week four, preseason, he fractured and dislocated his left wrist when giant linebacker Brandon Short tackled him. Pennington would miss the first six games of the Jets' regular season. Disrupted completely any chemistry and rhythm this offense had a chance to develop, and really, honestly, any chance this team had of developing any chemistry. First and goal at the Miami 8. Curtis Mark, nice block by Sewell, which opens the door on a touchdown. Curtis Martin, a guy that suffered with injuries last year, but this year, over 1,200 yards rushing, and has just gotten some beautiful blocks, especially by Sewell. In motion, comes back, cuts against the grain in front of his running back on Zach Thomas, Marlon Greenwood. Great block up front by the young offensive guard starting at left guard, Brandon Moore, number 65. The former defensive player in college as Doug Bryan gets the extra point. Curtis Martin with only his second touchdown run of the season, but it was a beauty. And the Jets are back in business. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Circuit City. We're with you. And by Old Spice Red Zone. Spice things up. Now in its 15th year of providing aerial television coverage of sporting and special events, the MetLife Blimp brings you aerial shots of our game today with the Jets and the Dolphins. Moments ago, an eight-yard touchdown run by Curtis Martin. And that was set up very nicely couple plays before on a Curtis Conway 45 yard reception. So we've had a Ricky Williams touchdown run, a Curtis Martin touchdown run, and the ensuing kickoff. And this will be Travis Minor inside the five, slipping, but got by Quincy Stewart. Now the kicker can't bring him down and finally just tripped up himself. Kenyatta Wright was in there as well, a 48-yard return. Take a look at Brandon Moore and Jason Fabini right here in the combination block. And what they end up doing, they end up allowing for Junior Seau coming from the backside. Good combination block on Romero. Fabini comes off on Seau. Moore stays on Romero. That was excellent and very unusual, folks, for those of you that have never played offensive line. You get a young guy like Moore, who's been a defensive tackle, getting his first real crack at offense in the NFL here as a starter today, being able to do that in a combination with a veteran like Fabini. Jet linebackers Jones, Hobson, and Glenn. 48 of New York, first and 10, the fake end around to Chambers. Ricky Williams. Brian Thomas with the tackle near the 45 and a gain of three. And probably the best thing about the young offensive lineman, Brandon Moore, you know, is a guy that came in as a defensive lineman and they kept him around and they let him go when they brought him back as an offensive lineman. And he he went to uh, Europe, NFL Europe, played with the Scottish Claymores. There he is right there. Brought him back, had to let him go again. What's he do? He's an elementary school teacher. <laughs> But that tells me one thing. Not only is he athletic and whatnot, he's also incredibly patient if he teaches elementary school. 4-3-4 four, four, jet defense, second down, seven to fake to Williams. Here comes Ellis, there goes Fever and Chambers. With the reception, Goins and Jones with the tackle at the 25-yard line, a 20-yard reception. And now three catches and 65 yards for Chambers today. A faith pass, Kevin, that's all that is. Fiedler has the faith that Chambers is going to get in that spot behind the linebackers and in front of the safeties. He doesn't see his receiver there as much as he knows he's going to be there, and he has the faith to, faith to throw it, and Chambers gets there perfectly. Bo Lewis has come back in as a linebacker, joining Glenn and Jones. It is a first and 10, 25-yard line for the Dolphins. Conrad and Williams in the backfield, and Ricky Williams. 
Bottled up. Sean there Ellis is there, among others. Game of two on the play to the 23. Next Saturday, CBS Sports has a college basketball triple header. First at noon Eastern, North Carolina takes on Kentucky, or Michigan State will take on defending national champion Syracuse. Then on the women's side, Duke will battle top dog UConn, and then South Carolina plays Minnesota. All next week on CBS. This is the perfect time now against this Jets defense. You, you've dinged them, you've dinged them. You go up the slot. You get your money man, Chambers, you send him up the field. Second down eight, Jet 23. But Michael, the tight end in motion. They dump it off to Ricky Williams. One on one with Grimes. Cracks his way into Jones. Goes to the 20 yard line and picks up three yards on the play. We go back to New York in our studios and gymnasts. All right, thank you, Kevin. Colts and Texans, and check out the rookie, Dominic Davis, right here. Finds his way right up the middle for the touchdown and the 7-3 lead over the Colts. Meanwhile, Tennessee and Tampa are tied at three as they still try to battle things out in the South. Let's go back to you. Yeah, no kidding. You know, Dominic Davis, Randy, we saw him earlier. He's a rookie from LSU, a fourth-round pick, and he is close to 1,000 yards for the Texans. Hey, in the next two years, folks, you're going to be buying a lot of Houston Texans merchandise. You're going to hear a lot about Andre Johnson, David Carr, Dominic Davis. It's going to be a special team in the near future. Four down, five from the 20-yard line. Fiedler, here comes Thomas. He got a hand on Fiedler. Caught by Chambers. Slashing inside the five. He's in for the touchdown. You've got a star player, the chamber, the, the status of a Chris Chambers. You get him the ball when you think you've got mismatches as fast as possible. Here's a great example. Doesn't go down the field with him. Dragging across the defense, being trailed. That was a mismatch and a great effort for a touchdown by Chambers. Mare's extra point is in a five-play, 48-yard drive. Chris Chambers his 11th touchdown reception of the season. What an effort. Fry, but it was set up with Chambers getting that 20 yard touchdown reception. Here's Chambers and Abraham. Watch Randy McMichael come in motion, come up the field, and then Chambers comes underneath him. There's McMichael driving, Chambers underneath him. Abraham trailing, can't get the knockdown. And from that point on, with everybody else dropped back that deep, it's just a matter of him making that effort to get in the end zone, and those are the kind of numbers the quarterback loves to get padded onto his stat sheet, the ones after the catch. There was some nice field possession, position set up by Travis Miner's 49-yard kickoff return. And then Fiedler worked his way down, Fiedler, Ricky Williams, and culminating with the Chambers 20-yard touchdown reception. That's Lamont Jordan. Deep back four. The Jets, who have scored on a Curtis Martin eight-yard touchdown run for Miami. Ricky Williams, 16 yards out on a touchdown in Chambers moments ago. The third touchback today by Olindo Mare. His 24th of the season. That is an NFL high. Coming up in the next Tell Halftime Report, Jim and the All-Star crew give you all the scores and updates. News in a very busy NFL. Plus, they'll be joined by the Philadelphia Eagles, Brian Dawkins and Darwin Walker. That's next on the Nextel Halftime Report. Chambers having a career season for Miami. This Miami offense having a career day against this Jets defense. On the 20 on the touchback, first and 10 after the Chambers touchdown reception. Let's see how Pennington answers. Going deep on the side, he's got Moss. Knocked out of bounds by Brock Marion. Speaking of career years, that's what University of Miami receiver Santana Moss has had to the 43-yard line, a 23-yard pickup. And, you know, for the last couple of years, they've thought of Santana Moss in a lot of ways, you know, just as a, an additional weapon. A guy that could pick up a punt return to take it back for a touchdown like he did against the Browns last year. A guy that could help you returning kicks. He's blossomed into a legitimate, starting, excellent wide receiver in this league. Pennington is 8 of 8, 43 yard line, first and 10. Curtis Martin. A more block and a tackle from behind. They got Romero there with uh, one of the Miami hits. And a good lead coming in after a gain of four up to the 47 yard line. 
It's still something fun about watching Curtis Martin run. I mean, even after all these years, he's still got that spark and that little pop. Jet 47, second and six, back to game, hit by a junior sale at midfield and driven out of bounds. It is a gain of three, and we've reached the two-minute warning. Coming up on the next Hell Halftime Report, Jim, Dan, Dion, Boomer, scores, news, highlights, a look at the upcoming playoffs, the next Hell Halftime Report. We'll take you after we finish our first half here in Miami. The Jets have gotten an eight-yard touchdown run from Curtis Martin. Two Monte field goals by the Dolphins. A 16-yard touchdown run by Ricky Williams. Moments ago, a 20-yard touchdown pass. Fiedler to Chambers, 20 to 7, the Dolphins. Third down, three at midfield. And they got a 4-3-4 Miami defense. Pennington has been spotless so far, but sacked three times. There's a cross the middle, caught by his receiver and close to a first down at Santana Moss, 47 yard line. It's going to be fourth down. He's going to be short. Wait a minute. What now? Oh, they're calling it a first down. Wow. Good spot. And they move the chains. 47 yard spot. line. Yes. <laughs> Four receivers. Pennington. Got a good McKenzie block that throws outside. Looks the next 37 yard line. Gain of nine on the play. Well, on that last play, next the play before last, Curtis Martin did an excellent job picking up a blitz by Junior Sale that bought Chad Pennington that extra time to get that pass off. And you talk about the complete game of a lot of running backs. Curtis Martin has had that game since his early days under Bill Parcells up at New England. This guy runs with the ball, excellent out of the backfield, catching it. He's one of the better blocking backs in the league. Five defensive backs, two linebackers, four in the line, second down one at Miami's 38. Curtis Martin found again and got by Romero. Breaks a tackle from Knight, has a first down, say of the tackle at the 29 yard line on a gain of nine. Zach Thomas a little shaken up there on the right, right shoulder, right arm. Stinger maybe, huh? Trying to make that tackle against Curtis Martin. Zach coming from the middle of the screen. There comes Junior Seau. Comes Zach right there coming in there. That shoulder takes a little pop from the side. Watch here comes 54. Yeah. Got to remember this is uh, the 17th week of a long NFL schedule. Neither one of these teams is going to the playoffs. Doesn't mean both shoulders, both knees, the neck, the back, and everything of these players isn't killing them. But isn't, isn't it great as a fan that you and I are of this game to know the guys that are injured in a meaningless game are out here playing on the final Sunday? Great examples, guys like Zach, guy like Rob Comrade on the Dolphins side out with a concussion from two weeks ago and decides to play in this blast game. Back of the football is touching the 29, first and 10. Curtis Martin back by Thomas, brought down on the play by Scanina. Gain of one. Timeouts, Jets have two, Dolphins have three. And what Zach Thomas did there for you young linebackers, young defensive players, get outside, do your responsibility, make the back cut back, you got help inside. Four, three, four, Miami defense, Pennington across the middle, and it's caught. That's the tight end, Anthony Beck on second nine, picks up six, he's to the 22. Timeout. Jets have one timeout remaining. They take this here with under a minute to play in the first half. Trying to sweep the Jets, these Dolphin fans would like. That's a power back. Yeah, it is. Third down and three after the Jet timeout on the 22-yard line. Empty backfield. They vacate it. Soles in motion. Offers a block and makes the catch and is brought down. Scanina now Seau. Dragging him down, they get a first down, 16-yard line, a six-yard gain. This is an excellent job by Chad Pennington and his Jets offense, manipulating the clock. They're not hurrying, very composed. Jets have a timeout, 16-yard line, first down and 10. Pennington across the middle, saw the catch, and he is caught in turn by Seau. Eight-yard gain down to the eight-yard line. It's part of the problems, too, with this, this Miami defense at times. You almost get the feeling that they play like, don't these guys know who we are? Mm -hmm. You know, don't they know we're supposed to be really, really good? Well, I guess Chad Pennington's offense didn't get the memo because they're moving this ball right down the field in this two-minute situation against this defense. Well, this defense is number eight, Miami's is, in the NFL, fifth against the run, 20th against the pass. 
Jets are out of timeouts, by talk the way. About, talk about places to improve. Yes. You know, that's one thing Herman Edwards talked about yesterday. Jets have a highly ranked defense. Buffalo's got a highly ranked defense. New England's got a very highly ranked defense. That's where he figures he lacks the most, is supporting his offense with a defense that ranks up among the best. How about the quarterbacking today? We saw Pennington 14 of 14, Fiedler 13 of 18 today. Oh, is that two really good quarterbacks or two pretty bad defenses? Well, I don't know. <laughs> That's your job. I get the numbers, you analyze them. Second down and two from the eight. Jets out of timeouts. Martin in the backfield. Pennington throws. That's his first incompletion on a brilliant play by Brock Marion. Stepping in front of Santana Moss. Yeah, that's, it's a little bit of a change up where maybe a fastball would have been better. You throw this ball with, with a little more mustard on it and you really zip it into your player, to your receiver, right there, just drill it in there. Maybe Marion doesn't have that time to grab him by the back and come all the way around. Jets took over at their 20 with 2.55 left. 12th play of the drive up coming. They're out of timeouts, third down and two. Another defensive back has been put in. That's Arturo Freeman by Miami. Pennington to the end zone and caught. Flag, Beck made the reception. I think it might be pass interference against Beck pushing off. Pass interference, 88 offense. 10 yards, the down. The problem is when Tony Gonzalez does that, it's a great move. When Anthony Beck does that, it's offensive pass interference and pushing off because they both basically did the same thing, get in the end zone and create separation. By the way, Beck today has four receptions. That is a career high, 38 yard, 38 catches in his career. There's Beck coming from the tight end position right there. Watch him when he gets in this end zone. He goes, he separates, he pushes off a little bit right there. I mean, he does push off, but like I said, it all depends on who you are and what your image is. If you're not a high-profile guy, you can't push off. If you can, if you are a high-profile guy, it's just good moves. Seven defensive backs, one linebacker, three down linemen, third down and 12. Penning to hit as he throws, and back is so incomplete. Now, fourth and 12. They'll have to settle for three, but they did move themselves into scoring position. And they can hopefully get three here if you're Herman Edwards. And the pressure, though, has been relentless. At times, they've done a good job of picking up blitzes, but you look at Agunlier and Taylor, you're an offensive lineman blocking them, and you block them 80 times. At least 10 of those 80 times, they're going to get a chance to hit your quarterback. This is Doug Bryan from 36 yards away. And now he has made 32 consecutive field goals under 40 yards. A 36-yard boot. They make it a 10-point game. Pennington, by the way, 14 of 16, 154 yards. As he tries to get out of this mini slump, he's in the MetLife blimp is teamed up with CBS Sports to provide you with this bird's eye view of this Jets-Dolphins game since 1987. The MetLife blimp has flown over 1 million miles to provide aerial coverage of sporting and special events. All right, here's our NFL.com poll. What is the most bizarre play in NFL history? You can uh, cast your vote right now at NFL.com. Uh, just saying bizarre. Yeah. You can't, it's hard to beat that one right there. Leon, Leon Letts, Letts. Leon Letts, no thing. I mean, that made no sense. That was very, very bizarre. Why is somebody to do that? I'm going to go with Franco's uh, immaculate reception in Pittsburgh against the Oakland Raiders, the then Oakland Raiders. But the Jim Marshall play was weird, too, when he was a defensive lineman for the going, Minnesota Vikings. Going the wrong way going at Keysar Stadium. Yes, that's right. That's very good. 1964. There's Travis Miner had a very good return the last time. Ryan just knocked one through from 36 yards for the Jets. Little squid kick and on a couple of bounces. Nearly picked up by Charlie Rogers. Brought down on the play by Kenyatta Wright. Four-yard return. Well, Superman doesn't avoid kryptonite the way those offensive linemen avoided that ball, do they? <laughs> they were not getting near that thing. Here's what the Dolphins have done today. A 23-yard kick by Mari, 43-yard field goal by Mari, a 16-yard touchdown run by Ricky Williams, and the last possession, a 20-yard touchdown pass, Fiedler to Chambers. And that's got to be Herman Edwards' sole focus when they go in at halftime is figuring out a way to get Jay Fiedler in this offense 
off the field a couple times. So Pennington's offense can get back into the rhythm of scoring and get make up these 10 points. Jets have beaten Miami nine of the last 11 meetings. That's the end of the first half with the score. Dolphins 20, Jets 10. Coming up next is the Nextel Halftime Report. After this message and a word from your local CBS station. Chad Pennington hit his first 14 passes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays <laughs> to you, Kevin. I mean, it, it's the end of the season. So, it is. And it's almost New Year's. So we figure instead of the, the typical let's let's do stat stuff, we'll give a little something about resolutions. New Year's resolutions for both these teams. First of all, the New York Jets. Easy. How about winning in September? Get off to a better start. A little more athletes, a little more speed, and extend Herman Edwards' contract and all this talk about him not being there, everything else. I mean, I, that's been kind of silly, but that's something this team needs. You know, Sam Coward there, the linebacker, and several members of, of that uh, defense of Herman Edwards are going to be affected by that getting more speed. But for the Dolphins now, let's look at them and their New Year's resolutions. Win in December. Learn how to finish a season. That comes back to being a little tougher. More team guys, less star players. And decide on the problem here and, and, and fix it. You know, one of the problems is your offense. You better fix that. Because that's something I think Dave Wanstead and this organization ignored last year, and they paid the price for it. But one of the real problems, uh, or one of the real pluses offensively has been Ricky Williams and the way he runs the ball. But you have to address the offensive line, and you have to address the other receiver besides Chambers. Here's Murray's second half kickoff. And on the run, Lamont Jordan inside the 15-yard line and hit by Arturo Freeman and brought down by Corey Jenkins, 35-yard line on a 24-yard kickoff return. And the sacks really jumps out that Miami hasn't had any against them, and the Jets have had three so far, and this has been just a, an offensive fest. Nearly 400 yards of offense between these two teams in the first half, and the difference really has been the Jets' defense has not been able to get off the field fast enough or at all at times to get their offense back on let them start functioning against Miami's defense. Miami will open up in a 4-3-4 defense. Best beginning field position today for the Jets, their own 36. Martin, the fake pitch. Here comes Taylor, but Pennington gets it out to Sewell, who is cracked by Brock Marion and Junior Seau. First down run to the 49, gain of 12. So far, a nice recovery by this Jets offense after that performance last week, especially Pennington and his five interceptions. Nearly perfect passing in that first half. Curtis Martin, a very efficient running game. And Santana Moss doing what he's done all year long and leading in the Jets in receiving. 48-yard line, it is a first down. Anthony Becht in motion, and Pennington to Curtis Martin. He's got a touchdown run today and slithers his way into the secondary to the 46 of Miami on a gain of six yards. Looked like Moreland Greenwood was there with the tackle. The Jets offensive line has got, a, I think, an excellent coach in Doug Marone, and you've got to start talking about a coach's job and the job he's done when you have a young player. We, we mentioned earlier Brandon Moore in there at left guard. You don't plug a guy in without having good, strong coaching behind him to get it, get him ready to play in a game like this. 46, second down, four. On the fly, Santana Moss. Curtis Martin. Slowed down by Zach Thomas and the Avalanche and Dolphins came in there and limiting him to a gain of one. At least two running backs are terrific, but Curtis Martin is, is really something. The 11th all-time leading rusher in the NFL, nine straight 1,000-yard seasons. Well, there used to be old standards, and we mentioned earlier how many carries Ricky Williams had, and that means you're not going to hold up. And I still think 400 is too many for a running back, especially for the long term. But guys like Curtis Martin, they carried this many times for this many years. He used to say they couldn't do it for this many years. But Curtis Martin just keeps going and going. A lot of it's the off-season conditioning program. Six defensive backs, third down and three. And Martin slashing his way with a quick cutback move and brought down by Zach Thomas at the 34, a gain of 11, and a jet first down. That's just a Curtis Martin run. You know, some backs have signatures, types of runs. Kurt Martin, Mark, Curtis Martin has never been afraid to go inside. He's been never afraid to live in that area, in between the guards. He'll go there, but that doesn't mean he has to stay there. 
Makes that quick cut outside, outside, taking advantage of a nice block by Santana Moss. And Kevin Mawai at the center going to the Pro Bowl. 51 yards and 13 carries for Martin today. Pennington on first and 10 to Seoul. He was drilled by Marion. He's down to the 21-yard line. It's a gain of 13 yards. Pennington, 15 of 17 through the air. We've been talking about Curtis Martin and Ricky Williams and sort of interchangeable as far as things that they do at times. And they're in some pretty select company along with Amon Green up in Green Bay as four years, consecutive years, I should say, last four seasons, 1,000 yards rushing. Only been three backs in the NFL do it. There's Ricky. Gerald Soule, by the way, as a career high or is tied a career high with five receptions. First and ten, Dolphin 21. First, second half possession. B.J. Askey in there with Mark. He runs into Scanina, is brought down by Sertan and Zach Thomas on a gain of four down to the 17. I mean, you can tell when a running back starts getting a bit of a rhythm. Watch him in his stance. Watch Curtis Martin, especially when he gets in that kind of eye formation stance. He looks like he's almost leaning forward before the ball's ever snapped. Just anticipating the ball. Can't wait to get those arms in that handoff position and have Chad Pennington give him that ball. Two linebackers, four on the line. Five defensive backs, second down, six, seventh play of the drop. Pennington being hit by Grunlier and dumps it off. It's caught by Curtis Conway, chased down by Madison. Inside the 15 or right at the 15 on a gain of two. I mentioned earlier about Brandon Moore. There he is, 65 at left guard. Watch the job that he does here against Chester. It's probably the hardest thing for a young lineman to learn to do, especially a young lineman who was a de defensive lineman, is pass block. Now, granted, Chester's not one of the niftiest guys and not a, a real threat to beat you right away, but that was a very nice job by the young offensive guard working against Chester. 4-1-6 defense for Miami. Six defensive ends. Third down and four. 15-yard line of the Dolphins. Bennington across the middle, caught by Moss. Nifty corks for a move to the seven-yard line. Hit by Bowens and by Marion. Gain of seven on third and four. First and goal, New York Jets. You know who's enjoying this, these last couple of offensive drives more than anybody else? The Jets' defensive players. Herman Edwards, Ted Cottrell, their defensive coordinator. Here's something this team has not done enough on a consistent basis, is being able to move the ball like this, have this chemistry, and have this rhythm. And it all goes back, not only to the players lost in the offseason, but more to not having Chad Pennington around the first half of the season or so. It's first and goal at the eight. Martin in the backfield, and the call. Soul with the block on Greenwood. And then Romero on the defensive line, coming through and making the tackle for no game. Second down and goal. Dolphins are in a 4-3-4 defense now. Their base defense, second down goal at the eight. They got Conway wide left, Moss and Soul in the slot to the right. And Chad Pennington to the end zone, backed, double teamed, and juggled it with Brock Marion and Zach Thomas draping him in the end zone, incomplete pass. Only the third incompletion in 21 tries for Pennington. There's like, here's Pet Anthony Beck looking like an NBA power forward trying to go up for a rebound with. Zach's got one arm. Marion's grabbing him from the back, grabbing the other arm. You just sort of run out of arms at some point, and you run out of football. Dolphins have five red zone interceptions this year, number one in the NFL. There's a third and goal at the eight. Back down the move, flag is thrown, and Martin slips and doused by Bones. That was Jason Taylor guessing a little bit on the snap, got off early. Offside, 99 defense. Half a distance to the goal, repeat third down. And to Jason Taylor's credit, he comes off early. Could have keep, kept accelerating and taken a heck of a shot on Pennington, but Seaway sort of, sort of let up a little bit. Brandon Moore taking the place at left guard of Dave Zott today for the New York Jets. And Zott's another guy probably not back next year. You know, Brett Smith, the, the right guard, is basically a tackle playing out of position. You know, offensive line is not a problem for this Jets team. Kevin Mawai going back to another Pro Bowl, the leader of the unit in the middle. Third down and going up the four. 
Rich Pennington out of the pocket and looping it to the end zone. Conway could not get a hand on it. Buckley was there in the pass a little bit high. A little? A lot high. That's on Chad. <laughs> you know, Chad's going to go to the sideline and he, he'd be disappointed and rightfully slow. I mean, Curtis Conway, this is a nice design, play design by Paul Hackett and the offensive coaches upstairs. Look how wide open Conway is. Granted, he got to lob it over some bodies, but just a little bit too much enthusiasm and a little bit too much height on that ball. They tried to get Gerald Soul out there. I'm wondering if the Jets were one player shy on that play. 22 yard try. They were one tall player short. <laughs> by Doug Bryan. And he makes another, his second today. And that was a 22 yard field goal. Doug Bryan just got his second field goal of the day but the Dolphin with that best red zone defense in the NFL allowing one touchdown in three jet red zone possessions this afternoon a lot of goes back to, to Zach Thomas in the middle and those defensive backs you see right there sitting on the bench and Brian has got a couple of boots Curtis Martin has the touchdown run here's the ensuing kickoff and Travis Meyer inside the five hit by Henderson boxes off him Chased by Stewart and knocked out of bounds by Derek Pagel, who is a reserve secondary player, a 27-yard return. Miami leads by a touchdown in the third quarter. Is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Friendly non-stop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. The CRV from Honda, built for the way you really live. And by HP. HP Technology Services and People help make more things more possible. Kevin, isn't that adorable? We, we both have daughters yep. and we both have a son, and wouldn't our sons just immediately run right through that sandcastle? <laughs> Ruin the whole thing. <laughs> exactly right. After the kickoff, which was preceded by a field goal by Brian, 29 yard line, Miami takes over, first and 10, they go outside. Chambers reels it in, guarded by Mickens, catch made at the 38-yard line, gain of nine on the play. Fiedler today, 13 of 18. Tonight on 60 Minutes, Michael Jackson, for the first time since his arrest, talks to Ed Bradley, and only Ed Bradley. See this exclusive interview tonight on 60 Minutes. Second down and one. Ricky Williams. He had some rushing incentives in his contract that he's trying to capture. Picks up a first down, diving to the 41, picking up three yards on the play. And speaking of numbers, here are some Dolphin numbers. And you really have to say, Dan Marino made the observation at halftime on the NFL today about, you know, this football team is obviously playing for their coach, Dave Wanstead. A lot of speculation about Wanstead's status after this game. Wayne Huizenga mentioned that he's going to make an announcement Monday or Tuesday about Wanstead's fate and the future of this organization. But this team is coming out firing on the offensive side of the ball. 4-3-4 four, four, jet defense, first and 10, 41 up Miami. Get going, get going, get going. And Fiedler down the middle. And that is grabbed by Rondé Gadsden, 42-yard line, 17-yard pickup in the first catch of the day for Gadsden. And for those of you unfamiliar with the situation here in, in Miami, you know, with Dave Wanstead, it's... Uh, his been pressure took over for Jimmy Johnson and you know we say diminishing returns because realistically that's exactly what it's been since that AFC East championship in 2000 but you saw in the pregame show before the game you know the number of coaches out there with 40 wins is is precious few in the NFL over the last four years 42 yard line first and 10 Williams in the backfield after that Darius Thompson reception it's Fiedler downfield and caught Donald Lee the tight end 22-yard line and a pickup of 20 yards on the play. Lee's second catch this afternoon. Now I'll mention again, it's a it's a testament to the lack of speed on this Jets defense that this Miami offense, passing-wise, is able to do with things it does. They're not going to beat deep, be beaten deep. That leaves the area of the of the football field behind the linebackers wide open because the corners are flying backwards. And the safeties are way back not to be beaten. That leaves that large area for Fiedler now to get 242 yards past him. And Ricky Williams on first and 10. Crashes his way into Tyrone Carter. He's out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Has a first down with an 11-yard gain. Ricky Williams today, 11 carries and 45 yards. 
Decent passing, but just a lot of Ricky. Good blocking. Good job by Rob Comrade working on Sam Coward. But that is the definition of a downhill run by a running back, and few people in the league do it better than guys like Ricky Williams outside of maybe probably the MVP of this league, Jamal Lewis, who going for that record tonight against the Pittsburgh defense. First and 10 at the Jet 11. Williams has a touchdown run. Fiedler has a touchdown pass for Miami. And Fiedler again to the end zone. Broken up beautifully by Aaron Beasley. They're going for Chambers. And a flag. And a flag. Personal foul, grabbing and pulling the man to the ground by the face mask, number 75 of the offense, 15 yards. Repeat, first down. It's right guard Todd Perry. Let's take a look and see what happens here is Todd Perry. Well, that's uh, that's pretty much just grabbing a guy by the face mask and pulling him down. James Reed, number 93, the defensive lineman. And sometimes it's better to do that than let a guy hit your quarterback, though. First and 25 from the Jet 26 for Fiedler. Here they come, and down he goes. Ellis was in there along with a uh, sack right there. Josh Evans, a 10-yard loss back to the 36-yard line. Evans' his first sack this season. Well, what a difference, though, Sean Ellis has made to this football team rushing the quarterback. Evans comes from the defensive tackle position. And Teddy Cottrell's defense gets a little pressure from the defensive line. Not enough. John Abraham wasn't able to do enough this year. Ellis has done an excellent job making his first Pro Bowl. In fact, Brian Thomas, the backup to Abraham's, done so well. They're talking about moving him to linebacker next year. Second and 35 from the 36, Ricky Williams. Grabbed on the play by Glenn. Three-yard gain to the 33. Jason Glenn from Houston, the brother of Aaron Glenn, who used to play for the Jets, is now down in Houston with the Texans. Wow. 384. Attempts for Ricky Williams. He had 383 a season ago. That's his own record. Third down, 32. They need the one yard line for the first. And Fiedler retreats. Pocket troubles. Jason Ferguson brings him down, and Ellis was helping on the play at about the line of scrimmage. Three yard loss now, they say. And Miami. We'll try for three. Watch the, the pocket start like this and end up flat. It's pressed into his face, and Ferguson gets him as he attempts to step forward. That was a nice job of Ferguson walking Perry, the guard, back into Fiedler. You can see Orlando Mare, who is four to five from 50 yards as a 53-yarder, trying to dial it, and misses wide right. There's that stop. They didn't give up points. They're getting off the field. Now it's up to the Jets offense to take advantage of the defense denying Miami. Miami had it first and 10 at the 11. Curtis Martin with the touchdown run. Doug Bryan, two field goals for the Jets. Ricky Williams, a touchdown run for Miami. Fiedler, a touchdown pass to Chambers. Two Murray field goals. That's been our scoring today. With Randy Cross, Kevin Harlan, 44-yard line. It's first and ten. Pennington outside pick. Nice catch. Upended on the play by Sertan. Three-yard gain up to the 47 to New York and Jim Nance. All right, guys, still trying to sort out that South Division. And while Tennessee leads 19 to 3, the Colts are now down two touchdowns as rookie Dominic Davis goes over a thousand and pops into the end zone for the second time today. 17 to 3. Houston, they're celebrating down there. Randy, what's going on with the Colts? Well, Jim, they're, they're obviously not paying attention to these standings, having to win to solidify a home playoff game. Second down, seven, Curtis Martin. Grabbed by Taylor, among others. Zach Thomas in there as well. It's a gain of about five or six yards, and he's into Miami territory at the 47. 
Monday on CBS, was it self-defense or was it murder? One agent goes up against Miami's most ruthless attorney. Don't miss Monday's number one drama, CSI Miami, tomorrow, 10, 9 Central, right here on CBS. Pennington today, 19 of 23, 191 yards. 48 out the Dolphins, second make it third down, third down and two. Lamont Jordan in the backfield with Soul. The fake to Jordan who gives him a block and it's over the head of Soul, incomplete, chased by Greenwood. Jets have got a punt. Hey, and Chad Pennington had a little problem with the Goonlier. Yes. He had a whole face full of the <laughs> number two sacker in the NFL. Agunle now with 15 sacks, trying to add to that total as he chases Michael Strahan that has 17. Coming right behind him on the same side of the ball was Jason Taylor, who took, looked like he took a helmet right in the thighs if he's trying to jump over the top. So Taylor is shaken up. There's Agunle from Brooklyn, played high school football on Staten Island. And loves New York. Not except, the, not except, the Jets. Today, except today. <laughs> <laughs> Injury timeout. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. And by Coors Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Cold, down, easy. Here's Jason Taylor. Watch Lamont Jordan come in and put a shoulder in his leg right there. Flip him over, the, flip him over and that's why it was slow to get up. But he walked off under his own power. Jets have got a punt. Dan Straczynski, a classic hang time guy, sends it back and inside the 10. Fair caught by Charlie Rogers. 40 yard punt as they continue to work on Jason Taylor, one of the best in the business. Chambers has a touchdown reception. Williams a touchdown run. A couple of field goals by Mare. And for the Jets, Curtis Martin, 60 yards rushing, a touchdown run today of eight yards. Two Brian field goals, a touchdown lead by Miami after the jet punch. Ten yard line, first and ten. Brian Thomas makes the stop by Ricky Williams. Game of three. Monday on the Late Show. David Letterman welcomes Julia Roberts, and later this week, catch Madonna and Russell Crowe, plus music from Pink and Rod Stewart. It's all this week on The Late Show with Dave. Second down and a long seven. Jets six, six, and nine. Dolphins at nine, six at home. The Dolphins are three and four. It's the pitch out to Ricky Williams and McMichael Black. And a good hit on the part of linebacker Sam Cowart, limiting Williams to a gain of two, 53 yards for Ricky today. Yeah, every game has its own little life, and at times in games you have very critical points and, and key, key step-off points for the rest of a football game. This down is one of those kind of key step-off points. Offense for the Jets did take advantage of good field position. Defense of the Jets now two good plays have to stop on third down so they get their offense more good field position. Five in the secondary. Third down and five for Fever. Here they come with the blitz from Glenn, incomplete as Garns was covering McMichael. And Miami has got a punt. And this will be the first punt today, if you can believe that, by the Miami punter, Matt Turk. Well, I mean, they haven't gotten off the field defensively for the Jets. It's got to be the first punt. Yep. It's like every other one ended up, in, every other drive ended up in a touchdown or a field goal for Miami. So we'll get our first look at Santana Moss, who's returned a couple punt returns in his career for touchdowns. High snap by Growl out of the end zone. It's out of here. <laughs> wow, that's a safety as the long snapper, Jeff Growl, who joined the team in midseason, has that one whistle over six foot four Matt Turk's head. He didn't even bother to jump. <laughs> Yao Ming would have had to raise his arms for that one. <laughs> Wednesday at 2 Eastern, CBS Sports jumps into bowl season when the Minnesota Golden Gophers take on the Oregon Ducks in the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. That's New Year's Eve day on CBS. Here's Jeff Brown. He is two years out of UCLA. He was picked up during the season. 
as a long snapper, and he lived up to his name right there because he snapped it long, well over the head of Matt Turk. So Dave Wanstead, who had a comfortable lead a little while ago, now down to five. Now, not only do you give up the two points, you're also going to give the ball back to the New York Jets with good field position. It was 20 to 7 Miami. Bad punt and caught by Baker, the reserve tight end, brought down by Tommy Hendricks, a reserve linebacker at the 42. That was a horrible punt by Turk. So the special teams kind of falling apart here for Miami in this late stage of the third quarter. A little bit different mood of this thing, especially field position wise for the Jets. Alindo Mari kept pinning him back on the 20 yard line with all those touchbacks in the first half. Now in the in this half, this Jets offensive team averaging the 41 yard line getting the ball. They have to take advantage of the work not only their defense is doing, but their special teams is doing and do something with this field position. Bennington is 19 to 24. Moss has six receptions. He's on the move. 43 yard line. First and 10, Curtis Martin. Hit by hey, Brock Mary and Moreland Greenwood gain of two. That will take us to the end of the third quarter. Curtis Martin's got a touchdown run, as does Ricky Williams. But Jay Fiedler's touchdown pass to Chris Chambers puts Miami on top 20 to 15. We'll return to Miami right after this message and a word from your local CBS station. Miami on top at one time 20 to 7 a safety moments ago on a long snap over the punter's head out of the end zone by the Dolphins possession now by the Jets 46 second and a long seven heading to 19 to 24 passing today and to the air hit and brought down Jeff Scalina the fourth Miami sack today and Scalina's third of the season the former Ram who came as an unrestricted free agent. Left defensive tackle working right there against Smith, 74. That's just a matter of stopping your feet as an offensive lineman. Defensive player hits you, you stop your feet, he's going to pull you down to the ground and continue his way to the quarterback. Seven defensive backs, three linemen, and Zach Thomas, the lone linebacker, third and 14. From the 39, they've got to get to the Miami 47. Martin is in the backfield. Fabini with the block and Pennington to throw. It's caught by Kevin Lockett, who is hit by Buckley at the 45. And he picks up 16 yards on third and 14. And they get the first down. That was a play sent down by offensive coordinator Paul Hackett. And Paul Hackett was... Uh was supported I should say this week by Chad Pennington came out when asked by the press about Paul Hackett and Hack has taken some some fire about things like clock management and offensive performance and Chad Pennington really said hey look a lot of the stuff that happens is on me this is one of the better offensive coaches in the NFL I happen to agree with it so at the top of your screen the running back is split as a receiver 45 of Miami first and 10 mark into Brock Marion, into the secondary, and down to the 36 on a game of nine. Uh, along those same lines of Pennington and talking about Paul Hackett, you know, if you're going to talk about that, I think it's only responsible to talk about the fact that Ted Cottrell, the defensive coordinator for the Jets, has been under a, an equal amount of fire and speculation about his, for, his future. I didn't hear a single Jets defensive player come to his defense. Second down, one at the 36. Martin has 72 yards on the day. He gets it again. Gets by Zach Thomas. And is hit by Sertan and Moreland Greenwood and picks up two yards on the play. The Dolphins have not allowed an individual 100-yard rusher this season. The only defense in the NFL that can boast that number. 33-yard line. It is a first down. And I mentioned her just a little bit about Ted Cottrell and whatnot. And, you know, I'll follow up that one by saying, you know, I think he's one of the best defensive coaches in the NFL. Remember, this guy almost was the San Francisco 49er head coach this offseason. Guys don't lose their knowledge. Guys don't get dumb that fast. They was, on defense, they don't have the players. 4-3-4 four, four Miami defense. Here's Martin. And into the teeth of that Miami defense. And Moreland Greenwood along with Skinny to make the stop after a gain of one. 
to New York, our studios and Jim Nance. All right, guys, again, if the Titans win, Colts lose, Tennessee takes the AFC South, and Neil O'Donnell has gone long again and hooked up for a touchdown for the second time today with Derek Mason. Tennessee doing its part, 26 to six, while the Colts remain down 17-3. Back to you. Hey, Jim, do you think the uh, Neil, Do Neil O'Donnell has that NFL package on the Jersey Shore there? He spent the last two months watching <laughs> Steve McNair in that offense. Boy, just pick right up where he left off. Second down now from the 32, Pennington. Caught by Santana Moss. Coming back home. He grew up here in Miami. He played at Carroll High School. He's down to the 18-yard line. Picks up 13 yards. Working on Sammy Knight. It's a first down for the Jets. You just get a little bit of a, a taste of the, the chemistry in the field that's developed now between Santana Moss and Chad Pennington. That's what makes whoever they bring in here next year in this offense, they've got to bring them in and make sure they get along with Chad Pennington, make sure they can have that chemistry. Very, very important. You can't bring in a malcontent type that will make problems. Swain is in in place of Moss is catching a blow on the sideline. First and ten. Tackle made by Romero on Curtis Martin. It's a gain of two. Says a lot when your teammates vote you MVP, which these Jet teammates did for Santana Moss a couple days ago. Rightfully so. How, how do you ignore the improvement that this guy's made in one season and the contribution he's made to this football team? It's been startling. Just like we talked about getting Chris Chambers some help on the other side, wide receiver-wise, for Miami being a key. Huge deal in New York. You've got to get another receiver. But I will say, I don't think a Terrell Owens or Tushan Johnson are the answer. Four linemen, two linebackers, five in the secondary. Second down eight for Pennington. Curtis Martin again. Nice move on Marion. And Martin is inside the five and down to the three. A 14-yard gain. There is a turn in the NBA called breaking your ankles, yeah. but they cross over. Yeah. And Martin broke about yeah, you, five ankles you on call that call seductive point. moves, Seductive don't you? move, yes. Well, watch Brock Marion just liquefy legs. Whoops. <laughs> well, part of it was a block. And there, were, there was a block being put on by Santana Moss there, but part of it was a little bit of Curtis Martin giving him that in, giving him that out, and he can cause some muscle damage to a guy doing stuff like that to him. 92 yards for Martin. First and goal at the three. B.J. Askew is in the backfield with Lamont Jordan, who gets the call, and Jordan Kyle drives his way hey, into the middle, picking up two yards. It was 20 to 7. Before then, 13 to nothing Miami. The Jets have not led all day, but they're moving now in about a six minute drive. And this is something we haven't seen. We mentioned about the last drive the Jets put together. You know, Dave Wan said studies the films of the Jets. I mean, that this is something they haven't seen out of New York. Taking advantage of a defensive performance and a defensive stop and following that up with a strong offensive series. It's Jordan and Askew in the backfield. Soul in motion, the fake, and here comes Chad Pennington to the end zone. Beck, touchdown. He beat Greenwood and Romero and Beck with a one-yard touchdown reception, his fourth touchdown of the year. And the Jets on top for the first time today. And they'll be going for two there. Herman Edwards on the sideline signaling for two. Watch how fast Chad Penny gets rid of this ball once he sees his receivers open. Look at this. Whack. And it's not pretty. It's not a perfect spiral. But as soon as he saw Beck open, he got rid of that thing. That was a nice, good, tr quick trigger. That is only the 12th touchdown pass the Miami defense has allowed this season. So the Jets on top by one. After being down 20 to 7, and before that, 13 to nothing. Now they're going to try for two. Martin in motion. Pennington chased by Greenwood and Taylor into the end zone, incomplete. <laughs> but flag down at the back of the end zone. Might have Sertan for a little defensive holding, working against Curtis Conway. Holding 23 in the defense. Half an inch to go. We do the try. The call was against Patrick Sutan, number 30, 23, working against Conway, 81. Just a little bit of a tug there, and a lot of bit of a tug there at the end. The flag comes in there late, and you see that jump up in the air. That wasn't a jump of joy. That was a jump of oh no. Jets get another shot. From the one instead of the two. 
six down defensive linemen. Only Brock Marion from the secondary. Jordan and Askew in the eye. Sewell in motion. Pennings into the end zone. And Bent could not scoop it in. Short, uncatchable Bent. They say he got it. Well, what do you expect? He thinks maybe a challenge is in order. He's, he is, he's giving him the old, you're going to believe me or your lying eyes to the <laughs> officials. <laughs> Chad Pennington again gets rid of it quickly when he sees his tight end open. Are the hands under the ball the whole way? Check this out. Where are the hands? He's got it. Timeout. This is the best look. There's Becht. Now watch his hands cup on the ground, and it sure looks like they're under the ball, right here. Ball lands on his hands, rolls over. Looks to me he's got both hands on that ball and controls it. After reviewing the play, the ball takes a little short hop into the receiver's hand. Therefore, it's incomplete. The Jets will be charged with a timeout. They're first. Well, I think you could say it might have hit. The tip might have hit, but I don't know about a short hop. Jets will lose a timeout. That's not a short hop at all. Yeah. I mean, the, that, that angle... You can't see the hands you can see from the other angle here in the end zone. But this thing does a lot of, a lot of different things. It might hop, it might skip, but I think it hits the hands before it does anything. Regardless, it is 21-20. And the Jets have scored 14 unanswered points. And once again, have to get some of the defense. They've had the last two possessions. I don't take it for unit. Here comes the ensuing kickoff by Doug Bryan. From the nine-yard line, it is Travis Minor. And brought down. Hit by Kenyatta Wright and then fallen on by Soul. 22-yard return. Timeout. Answer by Viagra. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. Staples. That was easy. And by the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. And today, the MetLife blimp is navigating the skies above Miami to provide aerial coverage of this afternoon's matchup with the Jets and Dolphins. The blimp is powered by twin 68-horsepowered engines. It can go as fast as 50 mi 55 miles an hour and get as high as 7,000 feet. Feet. After the kickoff return to the 31, Miami opens up. Jets just scored on a touchdown pass to their tight end bet. Two point conversion failed, even though it was challenged. First and ten. Fiedler with time and throws to Chambers. Grab, no, Beasley can't make the tackle, but Tyrone Carter does at the 46. 23 yard gain to the Jet 46. Once again, the path, the corners of the Jets are giving these receivers, especially Chambers, it's a gimme. I mean, it's almost like tossing a ball to an NBA player and say, here, have a layup. Yeah. You know, have a slow, not that they ever lay it up, they'd have to, they have to slam dunk it because that doesn't look <laughs> quite as good. <laughs> Fiedler today, 17 to 23, 265, and a touchdown pass to Chambers. 46 of the Jets, first and 10, here comes Jones on the blitz, and Fiedler going down the middle. Tackled by Tyrone Carter, 20-yard line, 19-yard line of the Jets, 27-yard pickup through the air. There's McMichael coming right up the seam. Watch the linebackers and watch the safeties. Behind the linebackers, in front of the deep safety. That's just taking advantage of, of a zone defense, drop back and drop it into that zone to your tight end. 19-yard line, 53 yards on the ground for Ricky Williams and picks up about three more right there down to the 15-yard line. It'll be second down. 
Tackled by Hobson. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. All right, things getting interesting, guys, down in Houston as the Colts I want to remind you earlier in the year were down 14 to 3 at home to the Texans, came back to beat them, and now they're within seven here. Edrin James is over 100. They're down 17 10. Let's go back to you guys in Miami. Hey, Jim, don't forget this. The Texans have blown four fourth quarter leads this year. We're going to try to prevent that today against the Colts. Texans have had trouble on the fourth. Second down and six. Pitch out. Ricky Williams. Grabbed by Walters and brought down. At about the 15. No gain on the play. Big game in Tampa with Tennessee. Let's go to Jim Nance again. All right. Now here's the other side of that equation in the AFC South and Tampa Bay. Don't give up on him yet as the Bucks bring in Sean King. He hits Aaron Stecker in his 26-13 in the fourth in Nashville. Let's go back to you, Kevin. Jim, the first place, of course, at stake in a division crown in the AFC South. Well, it's pretty simple. Would you like to play a game at home in your dome, or would you like to go play on the road? Third down and six. Ruddy will get the shotgun snap to Fiedler. Three receivers deployed. They blow it dead in mid-motion. You have to say in that, in that, that South division there, Indianapolis has the edge because they because they beat Tennessee twice. Offense. So Five Indy yards. has to lose, Tennessee Still has to win, down. and that would take that would flip it over. See, this is this is the most important spot right now that Indianapolis is in because that means one thing. That means home next week. You don't have the bye week like Kansas City, but what's at stake between these two teams is who gets to be at home for a playoff game because the wild card teams are on the road. Five in the secondary, two linebackers, and four in the defensive line, third and 11. And Fiedler going to the end zone and overshoots Chambers, coverage by Carter and by Beasley, and a flag at the 30-yard line. Personal foul. It's against the Jets. Wow. On third and 11. Randy, how big is that safety earlier in the game? Well, it's, it's huge points-wise, and these are the problems that this defense has had. Look at Sean Ellis and Robertson, and it's Robertson's really, I think, more his late push onto the ground after the throws away. Look at the timing. It's late. You know, if you ran that in real speed, it wouldn't look quite as late, but it, nonetheless, the, it is late, and defensive linemen know that. But rookie defensive lineman, especially one like Robertson, is a little bit worn down from a long season. That's a mental lapse. 4-3-4 four, four defense, first and goal at the 10. Ricky Williams, and here he goes, power climbing inside the five and diving to the one. Garns holding up the ball, but they are ruling that he was down at the one. Hobson made the hit, gain of nine. Williams, 17 carries and 66 yards. One more time, that critical roughing penalty in normal speed. Ball's gone. See, it's still late, no matter how you say it, and the elbow's kind of coming up into the face area. That's just a bad mental mistake by the Jets. And Ted Cottrell's defense, and Herman Edwards' defense for that matter, has made these mistakes all year long, not getting off the field. Second and goal at the one. Travis Miner gets the call and hit by Marvin Jones. James Reed, no gain on the play. Marvin Jones was flying around this field early in the game, made some big stops for the Jets on defense. But more importantly, the guys up front sort of, I don't say destroy, but they, they occupy the blocking. That enables a linebacker like Jones to come over the top and make that play late, because there's no one left to just, just hamper his ability to jump over. Three in the secondary. Three linebackers. Five in the line. Third and goal at the wall. Fever to the end zone. Dropped and intercepted by Hobson on the deflection. Through McMichael. And picked off by Hobson. And Travis Miner brings him down. It's the first interception today. A return of 25 yards for Victor Hobson, his first career interception. And as a defensive unit, you're gonna make a knucklehead move, give an offense life, you better make up for it. Taking advantage of McMichael bobbling the ball, 
Hobson in this defense take advantage of it. Hobson with his first career interception. He is a rookie. And the future in that linebacking core, McMichael could not hold on in the end zone. 25 yard line, first and 10 with 92 yards. This is Curtis Martin hit by Greenwood and right by a Goodley and a loss of a yard. Now, granted, Randy McMichael's going to bobble this. Hobson's going to catch it. But how about Jamie Nails here trying to make a tackle? He tackles him in the end zone. That's a, that's a safety as he's trying to bring that thing out. But for the first time this year, Miami is stopped in goal to goal situation from scoring. Time out on CBS is sponsored by Campbell's Chunky Soup. Dinner that fills you up right. Make it Campbell's instead. And by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. The Miami Dolphins led 2015 at the end of three. Miami this year leading after three quarters, 7 and 0. But 14 unanswered jet points. It's 21 to 20. The Jets on top by one. They've got it now after the timeout. And both teams had two timeouts remaining. Second down and 11 at the 24. Blocked by Fabini. Time for Pennington. and throws to Pat. Caught by Greenwood. Flag thrown at the 42-yard line. A gain of 18 yards and a face mask and a first down. Might, might be a face mask. That's interference. 88 oh. offense. 10 yards. 15 second down. Again. Another pass interference on Beck. That's his second one. Remember, the first one happened in the end zone. There's Beck coming off that left tight end position. A little, uh, little push off. There he is, right here. So there was, a, there was a little bit of contact. Jets have been penalized four times, and the Dolphins have been penalized five times. Herman Edwards' offense needs first downs to take this game away from Miami. Otherwise, they're asking for serious trouble. Dolphins in the base, 4-3-4 four, four defense, second down, 21. And the handoff, Curtis Mark, grabbed by Scanina. A gain of the yard, 14-yard line. Tonight on 60 Minutes, Michael Jackson, for the first time since his arrest, talks to Ed Bradley, and only Ed Bradley. See this exclusive interview tonight on 60 Minutes. They're at the 15, third and 20. The Dolphins have four defensive linemen, one linebacker, six in the secondary. And Pennington. Dumps it. Martin wasn't looking. He was covered by Bowens, and a flag is thrown, and perhaps Pennington was hit late by Jason Taylor. Holding, 69 offense. Oh. Taylor's the fly. Taylor thought it was on him. A couple big penalties on the Jets on that drive. Squanders position to Jim Nance in New York. All right, guys, if Cleveland beat Cincinnati, then Baltimore wins the AFC North. And where has Lee Suggs been all season for the Browns? He's got 150 yards today, two touchdowns, and Cleveland leads 19-14, failing here on a two-point try after the Suggs touchdown. Back to you. Hey, Jim, you know, Cleveland has lost eight of nine and four straight on the road. What a performance to end the season. As Butch Davis tries to keep that team together. Here's a punt. Straczynski gets it high. Charlie Rogers, fair caught near midfield. 34-yard punt. How important is that first down now the Jets offense didn't get? Huge. The offensive pass interference, the incompletions. Only ran a minute and 10 seconds off that clock, 2.56 left. You've given perfect field position to the Miami offense. Coming up next, the playoff shakedown continues as Brett Favre and the playoff hungry Packers take on Jarius Jackson and the Broncos. That's next here on CBS. This must be week 17 with people sitting. <laughs> Jake Palmer not even suiting up today. 49 yard line of New York. Miami takes over down by one corner to the end. Fiedler to the end. 
Caught by Chambers. Grabbed by Hobson with the tackle. 11 yard gain to the 37 yard line. Thinking about Jake Plummer. We saw him a couple of years ago. What a great job he has done for the Denver Broncos. They are in the playoffs, but he will not play today in Green Bay. This is just that formula for disaster I was talking about. Your defense has done a nice job in the red zone and goal line situation, but it's given up yards and chunks. Miami is almost now already in Mare field position for field goal. 4-3-4, four, four, jet defense, first and 10. Fever, here comes Ellis. He gets away from Thomas, and Fever throws it out of bounds. He was hit by Hobson. No yellow on the field. Incomplete pass. It will be second down and 10. Fiedler today, Randy, 19 of 26. A touchdown and interception, 303 yards. It bears noting earlier today, Olinda Mari tried a 53-yard field goal. That was with the wind. He had plenty of leg. The wind that there is here is going from left to right. So Mari will be kicking into the, into the wind. So they need to get it down to at least, I say at least, probably the 30-yard line. They get another first down. They're inside, not the safe range, but the makeable range. Second down and 10 from the Jet 38. Base defense for the York. Here comes Fiedler outside. Popeye Chambers and Fern Nickens has a first down. 27-yard line, 11-yard pickup. Well, that now puts them in the makeable range. Because of the pad, because of the respect, because of the lack of speed, you have to give up yards. And when you're giving up yards in those chunks to a team with a deadly field goal kicker, despite some misses that have cost his team this year, you get a guy like this who's been money throughout his career in these positions, he will kill you about 95% of the time. 27-yard line, it is first and 10. McLaughlin, Robertson, Reed, and Ray Ellis on that defensive line for the Jets. Here's Ricky Williams, who was really tied up by Hobson, and then that Garms and McLaughlin driving him back for two. We're at the two-minute warning. You're right, that play was made, though, by Hobson and that penetration. They need more big plays like that in the Jets' defense. Jets have scored 14 unanswered points. They lead by one. They missed on a two-point try after a Beck touchdown reception from Pennington. It's second down and 12. Two timeouts remaining each way. The Dolphins, second down, 12 at the 29 of the Jets. Very simple. If Miami runs the ball here, New York has got to start using those timeouts. Jets will stick in their base defense 4-3-4. Four, four. Fiedler with Williams in the backfield, and Ricky gets the call. He's being chased. Power brings him down along with Jones. At the 23, gain of six. Timeout taken by the New York Jets. They've got one remaining. Ricky Williams today, 19 carries and 70 yards. Tonight on 60 Minutes, Michael Jackson for the first time since his arrest talks to Ed Bradley and only Ed Bradley see this exclusive interview. That's tonight on 60 Minutes. Then Meryl Streep, William Hurt, and Renee Zellweger star in the network TV premiere of One True Thing. It's tonight on CBS. Third down and six. Pennington today, 22 of 28, 221, a touchdown pass and no picks. So the Jets have one timeout left, third and six. If this is another run, use the next timeout, stop this clock, give your offense some time after the field goal attempt. Third and six, 24 yard line, FIFA. Slings a pass, caught by Chambers at the 10. Nickens again was hit. Makes the tackle at the 9. It's a gain of 14 on third down and 6. It's first and goal to go, Miami Dolphins. How many times today have we seen Chambers, McMichael, Thompson sitting down in these zones of the Jets defense and taking advantage of this Jets defense? Career high for Chris Chambers, 153 yards and a career high nine catches. Jets are out of timeouts. They just burned their last. Miami's got two. Dave Wanstead, who will hear maybe as early as tomorrow from his owner, H. Wayne Huizenga, who is on the field right now, whether he will stay or go. My prediction is he will stay and they're gonna get a general manager. Well, that's not exactly the, the best thing for him. 
for Wanstead or for his football team, honestly. He's got a year remaining on his contract. He has missed now the playoffs two straight years. But today, the Dolphins going for their 10th win of the season. And it's a rarity not to make the playoffs when you've won 10. Clear day for Jay Fiedler. You're not setting up field goal position here. You're still trying for six. First and goal at the nine. Conrad in motion. Williams in the backfield. Jets can't stop the clock. Barnes does stop Williams at the five. Gain of three. They'll mark him at the six. And despite the struggles Miami's had in goal-to-goal -to -goal situations today, settling for a couple field goals, pushing themselves all the way back out of field goal range, Amari missing one, and then having a turnover that was an interception by Hobson, you got to think they have just taken advantage of their defense stopping, my, stopping the New York offense and efficiently their offense from Miami moving the ball down the field and taking advantage of a, of a New York Jets defense that is not very fast. Second down, goal at the six. Williams remains. Quarterback sneak. And Fiedler plowing his way to about the four on a gain of two. That's the last play for the Miami offense. The clock ticking down. Jets cannot stop it because they have no timeouts remaining. It's ironic that this season comes down here at the end to a, a field goal make against Miami because field goals have prominently figured in the entire season of this Miami Dolphins franchise. There's Olindo Mari and his snapper Grau. Grau has had a bad snap already, which was snapped out of the end zone, resulting in a safety for the Jets. Two points for New York. Part of what we've seen from New York, a 14-point unanswered streak. Timeout taken, seven seconds remaining in regulation. Well, Miami got off to a bad start this season in week one when Houston's Chris Brown kicked the game-winning field goal to give the Texans a 21-20 win. In week seven against the Patriots, Alundo Mare missed a 35-yard field goal in overtime, and the Patriots took advantage as Tom Brady found Troy Brown for the game-winning touchdown. And then in week 14 in New England, the Dolphins trailed 3-0 in the third when the Patriots' Rodney Harrison hit Fiedler Causing a fumble and the Patriots won the game 12 to nothing. All three close critical losses for the Dolphins. Who began the season four and one, lost three of the next four, won three, lost two of the next three. And here's where they end up. A 22 yard high snap by Grau. Pulled down, kick is up, kick is good. And with three seconds remaining, Miami has taken a 23 to 21 lead. But another high snap. Exactly why earlier Herman Edwards is going for that two point conversion, leading 21 20, trying to bump his lead to 23 20, was to protect himself from this. But the better protection from this would have been his offense in their last possession, getting a first down or two. But it was Jason Taylor and that defense of the Miami Dolphins that stuffed that run and set up the Miami offense for this Mare chip shot. If Miami goes on to win and finishes 10 and 6, there's the high snap and Turk with the good hole pulling it down. If Miami finishes 10 and 6, they would be the first AFC team since the NFL expanded its playoff format in 1990 to miss the postseason. And they would be the first AFC team to not make the playoffs with 10 wins since 1986 when both Seattle and Cincinnati did not make it. David Bowen's enjoying this. How about on that drive, Randy? Chris Chambers with two big-time receptions for Fiedler in the Miami offense. Well, how do you have a career day if you're Jay Fiedler and you're Chris Chambers and you're McMichael and a nice job by by Williams running the ball also? You know, this Jets defense personnel-wise was the perfect match for those career days. Playing a soft style of a defense, trying to protect from the big play. They were gobbled up down after down in situations, giving up huge chunks of yardage. Three seconds remain, and here comes Mare's kickoff. We we'll might see some lateraling here. Here's Swain. Oh, drilled by Tommy Hendricks, and that puts the explanation point on a huge 
Miami win over their division rival, the New York Jets. Huge because it may give Dave Wonstad his job, the 10th win of the season, and gives the Dolphins a good feel about the end of the season. For Randy Cross, Kevin Harlan, let's go to New York and Jim Nance. All right, guys, thank you. Yes, that's the first sweep for Miami over the Jets since back in 1997. Ten and six for the Dolphins, six and ten here for the Jets. And here you got bonus coverage coming your way down in Houston. Indianapolis has come back to tie this game, and let's go there now with Ian Eagle and Solomon Wilcox. <laughs> live from the Dolphins headquarters in Davie. Welcome to Rumor Central, everybody. I'm Dave Lamont. This is clearly not going to be our typical Monday at noon after a game visit with Coach Dave Wanstead. There is a lot going on. The building here, the Dolphin headquarters, has been loaded with activity ever since owner Wayne Huizenga showed up at 6.30 for a meeting with Coach Dave Wanstead. Now, it's been widely reported starting yesterday that Dave Wanstead will retain his job, maybe even receive a one-year contract extension, and work with a general manager for the first time in years since the Miami Dolphins have had that kind of situation where the coach will give up player personnel power. At the moment, we're waiting to find out. You can already tell if you're a regular on our program that we're not in our usual small media room. We are in one of the big defensive of meeting rooms and behind us is where the, all the activity will take place. We do also know that owner Heisinga's helicopter left about 15 minutes ago. Nobody can say for sure if he was on that. You'd like to figure that he was. So he may not be at this press conference today. We've also heard all sorts of rumors and all sorts of speculation. The good news is we think very shortly we'll get it all hammered out and find out exactly Will Dave Wanstead coach this team next year and have a contract extension for 2005? Maybe we'll even find out who the new general manager is going to be if that hiring has already been made. Maybe that's one of the reasons that this has been such a busy day. Meetings going on right up until the time we took the air to find out maybe we'll have someone here. Maybe team president Eddie Jones will be here. We've heard that he may be addressing the press. Our format's going to be a little bit different if you're used to our format where with some of us electronic wenches or wrenches, I should say, ask questions and then we break and run to a different room and that's not going to be happening today you're going to be hearing from all the different members of the south florida media asking their questions the writers as well as media and if you hear a lot of noise it's because just about everybody in town is covering this event live as everyone trying to get a handle on the future of the miami dolphins following a 10 and 6 season that you think well 10 and 6 it was better than last year's 9 and 7 but it didn't get them a playoff berth and the dolphins frustrated although they did come back and defeat the new york jets 23 to 21 understand now that a press release is coming out and this will give us a better idea and uh, that hopefully will be brought down to the rest of us here into what has become our impromptu television row and uh, try to figure out if we can read this one to you and we'll get an idea of what the direction of this game is going to be for the Miami Dolphins and for Dave Wanstead and for the new general manager if indeed he is being named on this press release. And we're trying to get that delivered to us as quickly as possible. And we, and we will have news on the direction of the Miami Dolphins for 2004-2005. We do hear that Dave Wanstead has received the two-year contract extension he was sinking, and they are going to be restructuring the front office. And we're going to get that handed right here. And thank you, Ray. And it is indeed official that Dave Wanstead, a general manager, will be responsible. And they have not named that general manager. It says here an extensive search focusing on the best possible candidate will be conducted for the general manager position. A decision regarding the hiring of the team's new GM will be made quickly to ensure the Dolphins will be well positioned to make necessary offseason moves to improve the team. And so Dave's contract now runs through the 2006 season. So it's a two year extension not just the one-year extension that had been reported. So and he had a year left on his contract. So basically, he's set at least a contract for three years. There was a quote here from Wayne Huizinga, but it does not name any names as to who the next general manager, or I should say the first, really, general manager is going to be. So that speculation will continue anew. And one name that came up 
And an interesting one is out of New Orleans, Randy Muller. And if that rings a bell, if you're a Dolph fan, yeah, that's the same guy the Dolphins dealt with to bring Ricky Williams to South Florida for draft picks. And, of course, one of those draft picks wound up being one of the best running backs in the NFL, Deuce McAllister. And you could toss a coin in the air as to whether or not that's uh, a benefit for the Dolphins. Certainly, I mean, you can't complain about how it's worked out with Ricky Williams. But for the Saints, they got a great deal. Deuce McAllister this season, certainly one of the finest players in the NFL. Ricky, of course, and his numbers and his performance speak for itself. He had his longest pass reception ever yesterday, the 59 yards. Now we see coming in the distance, team president Eddie Jones, head coach Dave Wanstad. So we're going to follow up, get the answers we've been waiting for, although we do know that Dave Wanstad does have some job security, something more than most NFL coaches have been able to say following this, if they can get through all the cords and uh, everything else, team media director Harvey Green is also there. Let's get busy with Eddie Jones. He is in the Dolphins aqua sweater, and he will be speaking first. We've got is this, this, is this working? Yeah. We've got uh, two significant announcements to make today about our football team. Uh, first, we're extending the contract of Dave Wanstead uh, for for two years. By two years, he'll now be with us for three three years in the future. Uh, I know none of us are happy we're not in the playoffs, but we're happy with Coach Wanstead and the way he's handled this football team. And, uh, and we think this additionally indicates a commitment from Mr. Heisinga to our, to our football operation. The second thing that we're doing, uh, a significant step, we're going to reorganize the structure of our football operation. We're going to hire a general manager to direct that operation. As all of you know, the, uh, the football business has changed over the last 10 years since the salary cap came into effect. Uh, it's a much more complicated operation. Uh, we think that this will be a positive thing. It'll allow Coach Wanstead to focus on the, the football team on the field, and the general manager that we bring in will focus on the personnel side of the business. Uh, that process has begun today. The things that you've read in the newspaper uh, and heard on television uh, have not been correct. We we have uh, we have not talked to anyone to this point, and we we have begun that process today. And those are the changes that we're making. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can about that. And Dave, how quickly do you expect some of those uh, to you know, actually hire a general manager? What would be the time? Joe, we're going to do that as quickly as we can. I would, I would, it's, it's going to be difficult probably this week because we're in the holiday season, but we're going to start the process. Uh, Mr. Heising is committed to it. He said, send the airplane <laughs> if you need to, to bring somebody in. So we're going to, we're going to do that as quickly as we can. Hey, you have a list of candidates out there. Is Rich Filman a candidate? Yes. Yes, he is. Have you talked to him yet? Yes, I have this morning. Do you have a list of candidates put together yet, Eddie? We have a list. That, uh, I'm sure that it'll grow uh, now that we've made the announcement as to what we're going to do. Uh, but we have not talked to anyone except I have talked to Rick this morning. Was that an interview, Eddie, with Rick? Uh, you might characterize it that way. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, you don't have to interview Rick Spielman. We know what he's done, and I think Dave can can speak about that. Can you talk about the process you guys went about in deciding this was the change you wanted to make to this organization? Well, we, we, studied, uh, we studied the entire league. Uh, we've been doing that for some time. And about uh, two-thirds of our teams are, are have a general manager and a head coach, a, a dual operation, if you will. And, that, and that's pretty indicative when you have two-thirds of your 32 teams doing it that way. And that's a pretty good indication. Uh, when you talk about the, the dual nature of most teams, are these co-equal positions? Oh, well, that, that, that varies across the board, Jason. I mean, I can't be any more... How are you guys structuring? Well, I'm not sure until we talk to the candidates, quite frankly, exactly how we're going to do it.